All right, this footage is epic. Such a stunning scenery. I love this industrial scenery. It's gorgeously beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Now, Sebastian, let's talk about the rowing. You said you've worked on a couple of things, and interestingly, you've sent me two pieces of footage. So one is like your standard rowing style, and the other one is where you try to imitate Dusko, the uh, Dusko, the, the the Greek uh, Olympic champion of 2021. So I will have to, I will have a look at both of your pieces of rowing and try to analyze that. Now, in this piece of rowing, of course, the water is a bit choppy. There is always that bit of ground choppiness that is always there. It's very difficult to stabilize the boat. I understand that. Okay. But there are a couple of things where I think you're losing massive speed. First of all, let's talk about the positives. Um, I love the way you connected the finish. So you really let the stroke end. So the trunk is engaged with the feet. That is beautiful. And the way you, you, you set up posture stabilizes the boat a lot. And I think this is what keeps you going in, in choppy conditions like this. I like your rhythm. That's beautiful. Nice acceleration. Yeah. Okay, Sebastian, now let's talk about the negatives. Um, let's talk about the, the, the obvious things. So the time it takes you to connect with the catch is too long. You enter the water. I'm not talking about upper body work and body work in general yet. You go deeper, you go deeper, you go deeper, still no connection. When does the blade resurface? Oh, oh, now, late, 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 late. Let's look at the shaft then, okay. When does the, when does the shaft stabilize? Vertical, 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 still vertical motion. The blade is still going deeper into the water, still deeper. Now it's starting to stabilize. Okay, that look at the upper body now. It's pretty much upright. Uh, it's pretty round. Your pelvis tilts in the wrong direction, tilts backwards, should be tilting forward. At that stage of the drive, you should still have a forward tilted pelvic area. So at the catch, if we go forward, you should actually be able to retain the, the, the forward tilt. Your trunk ends around your pelvic area. So you need to tilt your pelvis forward, make sure the rest of the trunk is in line with it. So you can use the full lever, the full length of the lever that you have available. And that's not the case here. So you go forward, let's talk about body works and, and, and why this happens. Or one, one step before, your upper body rotates in anticipation of the force that is going to occur. So essentially you stabilize your trunk with a motion. There are two main ways to stabilize the trunk. Uh, way number one is uh, aesthetically, uh, way number two is dynamically. And essentially what you do is a mix of both, you get into a motion to get into a position that allows you to stabilize the trunk. I hope that doesn't sound overly complicated. But at the catch, if you kick hard with your legs, and Sebastian is working hard with his legs right now, um, there's a lot of force involved. And um, it, it transfers from from the feet up, knees, hip, trunk, shoulders, arms. So through the entire body. The weakest link usually is the trunk. And the trunk is easily overpowered by the legs that carry your body around all day. So you don't walk on your arms, you don't walk on your trunk, you walk on your legs. So your legs are the strongest muscles in comparison to trunk and, and, and arms. So of course, if the legs go full throttle, uh, your upper body is going to be overwhelmed. It's going to be too much. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So if you're in the same situation and, and you have a, a trunk that is like Sebastian's right now, the, the posture, um, the first way to solve this really is to make sure that your tilt is right. So it's really that, that samba motion, bop, salsa, whatever it is, you need to tilt bop, backward. And you need to keep this tilt right there um, all the way through through three quarter slide from from catch to half halfway one quarter slide this is how long you need to keep it if you don't have it uh, and, and you become soft what's gonna happen is if 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 the pelvic tilt is wrong whoop you see the rest of the trunk becomes round as well 
that almost creates a hollow back. But the hollow back per se is just a byproduct. It's not what I'm actually looking for. I'm looking for um, the, the, the pelvis to be in the right angle. I'm, I'm looking for the pelvis to be in line with the rest of the trunk. It doesn't mean you need to have a super straight um, back. That is certainly not a bad idea, but it's not, absolute, it's not absolutely necessary. What I'm looking for is at the catch, there should, be, there should be like a statue, so there should not, there should not be any change in, in your posture. Your upper body should not pivot around the hip and your trunk shouldn't become any rounder. And, th and that's clearly the case, so you, you pivot around the hip. You try to hold the upper body, but it's very difficult. You already are pretty much round, hunched, stretched out, and um, your, your low trunk is essentially always straight. So even, now, even though you're at the catch now, it's, it's exactly hidden now behind the uh, behind behind your oar, but you can see that the low trunk, so the low spine area, is actually pointing backward or is straight up. So all the flexibility you get in order to come to the catch is not uh, from around your pelvic area, which is what you should be pivoting forward. It is up here in the mid back, and that's too weak to hold. So you using the the, the small muscles. The, um, the small stabilizers to um, sustain the force that your legs can apply. And that's, of, of course, it's not going to work. So, of course, your body goes into self protective mode and says, okay, I better get myself into a, a position where I can eat, yeah, sustain the force in, in, in a better way, which means upright. But that creates another problem. I'll explain in a minute. I'm going to hop on a by row and show you. Now, the result of your upper body being engaged so early is that you essentially roll around uh, your low trunk and there's never really that leverage, the long leverage you need. Um, you, can, you can move any load you want as long as the, as the lever is long enough, but it's not. And that's what you need to change. See, at a point of time where your legs are almost fully extended, your upper body is already straight, compared to this is what you had at the catch. So, in an ideal world, you should hold that upper body in place until now, you should still have it available now and then pivot, which is not the case. So that, that's where you're losing a lot of speed. Um, if I had to give it a number, I would say this is about, if, if, if you can do this well and you have time to prepare with this new technique, then I would give it a, about a three to four second 500 meter split increase or improvement, improvement. So about three to four seconds faster or 500 if you can do this well with the same exhaustion level. Uh, I might be exaggerating a bit, but probably not much. This is what I've seen um, with, with my athletes in the past. And really this is the reason why you, you blade, your oars go in vertically and you also wash out. The washout itself cannot be corrected at the finish anymore. You try to correct it by being super composed and super well planted into that finish position. It's curing symptoms and not the cause. Where does it all start? Hands lead out and yeah, your knees bend and there's nothing to pivot against. So at the finish, I want to make sure that if I really rock over, if I don't rock over, what's going to happen is that I always, I'm, I'm like passenger in my own boat, I cannot control it. There are many more things to, to talk about here, but I don't want to keep this, I want to keep this video short. And as we go forward, it's the same problem again. Now, some people say, well, just keep more space between your seat and the foot stretchers. That's, again, curing the symptom. Uh, the cause is a lack of hip and, and pelvic mobility. And if you solve the issue about the pelvic mobility, the rest is going to be solved as well. It looks dynamic, but somehow it's like missing that ultimate speed um, towards, towards the later part of the drive. This is where you should pick up most of the speed. By the way, interesting, the, the flag only halfway up, Canadian flag. I wonder why that could be. And something else I see, there's quite a bit of shoulder motion here at the finish. Yeah, you berserk a bit in. Because you want to accelerate, but somehow it's just, uh, there's not really something to hold on to because the blade is not connected anymore. And that washout is something you can't really cure. Uh, not at the finish. There's no way you're gonna fin you, you can solve this. Okay, so this is where you try to roll like Ntuskos, um, the Greek Olympic god of 2021. With a late upper body pivot. 
It's certainly um, moving to the right direction. Interesting, yet yeah, you try to imitate styles. Sebastian, this is a very good way to improve your technique. This is how I learned to row. I just tried to imitate different people. And I went even that far that I tried to feel like other people. But this is a choppy piece of water. Wow. Okay, Sebastian, now I have you right, right next to me. How do you enter the water? Again, with, oh, nice. You really just raise your arms, beautiful. Now legs start to push. Oh, now the upper body engages. It engages, it engages, it engages. Too early, too early. Dusko did it much later. I, I did a full video analysis on that Olympic single scar race, but I just don't know how to upload it because it's, 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 Essentially, they, they come with loaded rifles to your front door if you do this. <laughs> it's, I don't know, so, so much copyright protection. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, 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 it's again the same. It's, it's very similar to, you, to the video you sent me before. So look at it. Yeah, the upper body engages very early again. I'm, of course, you've been distracted and all that stuff. It's not easy to find back into that game. Yeah, the problem is you never really load up with the catch. There should be that load phase here at the catch. It doesn't matter that you look out right now. But here you need a lot of you need a lot of stability right in there in this area in order to keep the trunk where it is and start to push, keep the upper body in place. And that's what requires a lot of tension in the low back here. That right there. In the low back, this is where you need. So right there, this is where you need all the stability. Let's look at the first couple of strokes. I think this is where you more, where you were more in tune with your idea. So in Duskos, come on. Elas, Sami, Sami, very good Greek drawing. Okay, okay, going forward. Add the catch. Nice, nice, you really try to have a long leg drive, but it's the same. The upper body engages very, very early again. But I see the point, and I think, Sebastian, the direction you're going, you're going at is, is a good one. That's pretty much what's needed. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And, um, it, it, but now it's all about pelvic mobility. You need to have a better pelvic mobility and more strength in there. It's not just mobility, it's also full range of motion strength, being able to keep a position. So let's use the opportunity. Here are a couple of bi-row clubs. I want to give it a try and show you what I mean. Sebastian, the main problem is that um, your upper body essentially is, is like, um, when you throw a ball, it's like a whip. I, I just recently made a private video analysis and pointed exactly that factor out. So you, you've got linear work and you've got exponential effect. You've got linear effect and exponential effect. If I do legs only, that's linear. So you accelerate linear because that's the thing. Your your inner angles, your angle in your thighs, trunk to to quadriceps, is opens pretty much consistently. And just before your legs are fully extended, you can use whoop, the upper body and open the inner hip angle. And that's what that's that's what creates the extra speed effect. Now, if you open that hip angle right here, you do create a lot of load on the blade, but it comes with two major downsides. The first one is that your blade is in a very bad angle to attack. So that's that if that's the catch position, that's only 60 degrees or so. The blade points more away from the boat than it actually does forward. And if you apply all the, all the power you've got, or all the force you've got to be precise, that comes at a point of time where it doesn't make a lot of sense. Water is infinitely stronger than everything <laughs> you throw at it. Water is, is, is probably the strongest element we have. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to try to con convince a boat to plow through the water quicker if the angle of attack of your blade is really not good. And secondly, if you want to give the boat a long-lasting acceleration, that's the point. 
Everybody talks about stroke length, stroke length is the key and everything. Yeah, right, but you gotta, <laughs> there's a difference between a long stroke and a long effective stroke. So let, let me give an example. I can make, uh, very happily, I can do a 120 degree stroke. Looks great, huh? Doesn't it? So the effective angle is a much shorter one. The effective angle is probably from here to there. You need a bit of time at the catch to connect with the water. You need a bit of time at the finish to disconnect from the water. That's okay. But ultimately what you want is something that is stable and allows you for a late upper body pivot. Then when it matters the most, you accelerate here, you accelerate, you hold, 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 hold. Your boat is in linear acceleration. You gain speed. Now the boat <laughs> doesn't threaten, but the boat runs risk to run away from you because you've accelerated. The boat collects speed gradually. There's only a certain progression, rate of progression, of which the boat can actually collect speed. And now the blades A are the best angle to attack. And then the boat is already quite quick. So the ratio of force input to speed output is excellent. So why don't we make use of that? And now it, and you do drive, and now you do the kick. That's the whip. No arms involved yet. It's all about legs and upper body. You know, so in other terms, preserve that upper body forward lean angle until it's time to, that's, that's very un, un, unscientific, but for me, the upper body is like the turbo. At the catch, it doesn't make sense to apply it because all the peak load will not accelerate the boat much faster. It's like doing a full power first start stroke. It's useless, it's absolutely useless. But giving the boat time to collect speed and when you have a very nice ratio between force input and speed output, then fire the afterburners, meaning the upper body. However, if you already start to do that, how do you want to fire the afterburners without doing sit-ups? You don't want to be doing sit-ups. You want to throw your weight back, but you don't want to do ab training. I hope it makes sense. Hey Sebastian, beautiful footage. I hope, I hope this helps you. Thank you very much for all the support and the beautiful things you've sent. Uh, they, they've got a place of honor in, in the Biro workshop. Ladies and gents, if you're in the same position, I hope this video helps you. If you want to send me your footage, um, the best thing is upload it to YouTube and send me the link. Um, just tell me in the email, yes, Arm, you can use it for social media. That allows me to do a public video analysis. If you want to have a private video analysis and paid for it, go to armtraining.com video analysis, you can book one and it's only going to be for you and not published anywhere. It's your private video then. If you want to work with me, go to armtraining.com. I write a lot of training plans, strategic training plans for masters and Olympic athletes and juniors trying to help them to be competitive. That's the most important point for me. And there are going to be two rowing camps in 2022. I'm still figuring out the locations. Probably one is going to be in Hungary. And about the second one is not quite clear yet. Definitely not in Austria this year. Go to armtraining.com, register for the newsletter. This is where I'm going to send out all the info first. All right. Thank you very much for watching until the end. If you haven't subscribed, do so. You can also watch this video ad free along with many others on the arm training member area. This is where I upload all the videos, usually earlier than on YouTube and ad free plus all the other sessions. And last word. Every Saturday we hold live Zoom sessions, so live training on the water and on the in the rower. So you can join and you get live technique feedback. It's a couple bucks a month. You have more than four sessions every month with live coaching. All right, that's it now. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.
trusting I gave 